Hi everyone, I'm Tina with Gems Paper Scissors. Today I am going to do a fast one card each of this kit for yesterday and today just to see how smoothly it goes. I haven't made any of these yet, so we'll see. The first card up has lots of little pieces on it. I did pre-cut all of this. The kit says to prep my card base by going through and inking the edges with toffee ink. So I'm it suggests using a sponge. I really like my sponge daubers. This is a new one, so I've got to get it nice and juiced up before it'll work. So I'm just going to go around and start distressing the edge. Uh, we'll see if I, I'm putting too much on or not. Probably, but that's okay. So, as I go, I add a little more ink. Typically, I'd use my other mat, but this is what I had out and handy when I started this as far as getting ready this evening after all the daycare kids left. So, kind of adding a nice little distressed look here. If you don't want as much on, or you wanted a smaller perimeter, you could just run it through the ink pad, which I'm pretty sure I'll end up doing on at least one card today. So, kind of going through and blending it in a little more. And then it says to ink the French vanilla piece, which is this one. And says to stamp the top of the paper clip repeatedly across, then sponge the edges with the toffee ink. So again, I will be using my sponge dauber. And because I really don't feel like turning my mat over for the sponge, I'll use the sponge that comes with this. And it says to use the clips. So I'm going to put that on my one by one. In case you haven't used our blocks before, there's a nice little edge etched in that helps keep things straight. It also lets you know which side is for the stamp itself and which is to be held. When you're using it, the top is nice and rounded, whereas the bottom is a bit sharper of an edge. So it's nicer on the hand and the fingers to use the correct side for the stamp versus your fingers. So then it just says to do this repeatedly. So that's what I'm going to do. Not exactly getting it perfectly straight, and I'm really okay with that because I like the offset feel. Some might be more particular as to keeping them all exactly the same, and that would be fine too. I just kind of like that little wavy feel. We'll see if I like it by the time I finish this. And then I try and keep my stamps tidy. So I keep my stamp chamois in a salt cellar with a opening lid. It's not required. I just like it because it keeps my stamp chamois moist and handy with still allowing some airflow so it doesn't get musty. So that's how I keep my stamp chamois in between uses. So there's that. Then it said to ink the edges. 
I think this time I'm going to just run my paper along the edge, which is what I frequently will do. It doesn't get as heavy of a coating, so it might not be enough. Let's see. It's really fast and you can see it, it does darken it a little bit. And I think for this particular project, I'm going to keep it that way instead of using the sponge dauber. Set that aside. Then it says to use the mink paper and using the espresso pigment. And toffee stamp thank you with the espresso pigment, then sponge the edges with the toffee. So, we'll grab that, put that on my block, and use my sponge so that it inks nicely. And because this is a pigment ink, I don't need to press as hard because it's much more juicy. It's a wetter ink. So there's that. It's a nice, heavy, but not sloppy look. I have to agree. I like that. I thought about changing my ink to the standard water-based ink instead of the pigment-based. And I still might for the others, but I probably won't just because it really does pop. And I like that. So with the toffee, I'm going to go ahead and just edge it the way I did with the clip sheet. I'm going to get it a little bit sharper of an angle so a little bit more of it hangs over. Again, you could do this with your sponge or with a sponge dauber. But just to de-stress the edges, I, I figure that the heaviness on the card is going to be enough. Okay. Then it says on my craft squares, which there should be three of them, to ink and heat emboss. Suggest using tweezers to hold the paper while heat embossing. I'm not going to. I am going to rub with the anti-static pouch because it will keep my embossing powder where I want it. So this is supposed to be the stars. So we'll take our stars and put that onto the block. We'll get this nice and juicy wet. Stamp each of these. These are wet enough that you should have a few moments to get your heat embossing done before they dry. So I have one of our old embossing powder trays that allows me to pour the excess back into my jar. And I'm using the super fine silver embossing powder and I'm just pouring it all over it because I can pour it back into my jar. You could put it over a piece of paper. If you don't have a cute little tray, you could go on ahead and stamp it and then use a spoon to pour it over while still keeping it above the jar. There's lots of options. This is just the one I happen to have available that I like the most. I keep hoping that we'll come back out with this tray because it's been very, very handy over the years. Now I am going to do my heat embossing off of my mat because this does not really love 
the heat as much and I don't want it to get marbled or marked up so which is fine my workspace has a glass top as well and I do not have my tweezers immediately handy so I'm going to use my nonstick scissors to hold my sheet in place and quickly get this heat embossed which really does seem to be making that star stand out more. So, there's one down, two to go. And the trick is, is to keep your feet done moving so that you don't scorch your paper until all of the powder has melted. And you'll be able to tell because it changes color and texture and depth. Two down, one to go. So, as you can see, these turned out quite nice. They'll stand out nicely on this card. So, then it's just assembling using the card and some adhesive. So, we're going to put the thank you first at the bottom i suppose it doesn't really matter which order you put it on but this makes it so that i'll at least know where i'm at and there's measurements but i don't follow those very well either not the best about following directions so this is kind of an interesting video for me to make then that just bumps up against. Then I'll use the large craft paper. And I tend to use quite a bit of adhesive on these. So that's not too bad. And I could go through and distress the French vanilla for the overlay, but I'm not thinking it needs it with the craft paper backing it. It kind of looks nice. So now it's just a case of getting my little squares placed. So I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of room between each and then place my craft little grid texture paper down and the kit suggests after this that I go through and add the twine. And I don't know if I will. We'll see. Let's see here. Thank you. 
And I know I could have used a ruler or used the grid that I'm actually crafting on top of. But I really like my offset appearance. Some of them I may go on ahead and get a little bit more particular on, but this kind of suits my kind of crafting. And so in the example, there's a twine bow. I suppose I could put that. just to give it a little more dimension. As I said, I didn't have most of this prepped. I'm just kind of doing it as if nobody was watching. Although I'm talking way more than if it was just me. And I have a bow making tool. But I think the charm in this particular project is having the bow a little bit more rough cut. <clears throat> so, there. And I think over time, the edges will, on this bow, will kind of fray to give it a rustic look. So there's the first card done. Fairly quick, fairly easy, kind of enjoyable. Then the second card looks a little bit more involved, but not terribly so. So let's see. After cutting it, it says to take the grid and ink the edges with toffee. So I'm going ahead and do that again using my sponge dauber. Just because it looks like it should be a little bit rougher of a inking than just running it around. I'm going to do it slightly different and just kind of buff it on versus daubing it on. which kind of gives it a different effect. It softens it more and gives it kind of an antiqued feel. Almost like an a antique cloudy, the, the coloring's coming from the edges and just slowly aging in. It's a really fun way to do things. And then it says to take the French toffee. I'm not quite positive which one, because I have several. Let's see here. Oh, it must be that one, because this one gets cut down. And it says to ink my stars on with the toffee. So instead of using the heat emboss technique, so again with the toffee, and then I'll do one, two, three, then I'll go to the clear other side and do one more. And then again, I'm keeping my, my stamps fairly tidy. They're not perfect, but because I use my stamps quite a bit. And they stain, but keeping them clean helps them work and keep them in nice, happy order later. There's that. And then it says to take the big square and sponge its edges as well. So I'll continue with that brushed effect. Hi, Katie. Hi, Corrine. Wishing your stamp set was available. Uh, oh yeah, I agree that I wish it was available alone, but 
truth be told, I really like the thin cuts. It made prepping this much nicer. And the paper I can use over and over and over again. So, ooh, you're going to do a swap. That'll be fun. So then it says to do my hand. So I think I'm going to need the slightly larger block. And it recommends doing the espresso again. So I'll go ahead and do it with the heavier pigment-based ink. The trickiest part is to make sure you get everything to line up. But with the clear acrylic blocks, you can see nicely and it just happens so smooth. Normally I would have used the sponge that comes with, but using the pigment, you don't always have to if it's smaller, not heavily detailed stamp. So I elected not to that time. And again, I really love using my salt cellar for the cleaning stamp squeegee. And then it recommends edging it. And I'm not going to. I really like that heavier look other than on those thick white spots. So I'm not going to do a thorough on all of it. Just, just some of those spots that are a little bit bigger than the stamp itself. And then the long strip is meant to be using the toffee and the espresso for the sentiments. And so it suggests stamping close together and then trimming it down. And because this is smaller and a lot of it, I don't want it to get too blurry. So I'll go on ahead and use the sponge. Then it says just writing. And then to say and thinking of you, I think. Let's see, thinking to say and of you. So these are the ones that are in the lighter color. Let's see if I've actually got that where it'll fit. Eh, not quite close, but not, not all the way. I'm trying to make it so I can actually stamp all of it in one go because <laughs> That's just how I'm feeling today. So bear with me. Not actually used to people actually being on when I'm doing my lives. So, okay. So these are going to be done in the toffee. And I'm not going to do it perfectly straight because, well, I'm not good at that. And then I'll switch out my stamps after I wipe them off so that the other two get done. Hope everybody's having a fantastic Tuesday. My week has been very bumpy, but not nearly as challenging as last week. As many of you know, I lost my one of my, well, my last grandparent last week. And so it's been busy. It's all good, you know. I'm grateful that she's no longer suffering and, and all that. So here we go. Go the two in espresso. That didn't stamp very well, so we'll flip it over and try it again. Let's 
just stamping heavier than I like. I'm going to clean it up and try it again. We'll see if I have to actually pull out a spare piece of paper. Which I might. Yeah, I'm just not, not terribly impressed with that. So I will grab another strip. And try it without the sponge to see if it will actually press a little cleaner. So again, it's it's been hard, but it's been good, and I'm really grateful that my grandma is not suffering anymore. It was a long process. She'd been in a coma for 13 days, and uh, She'd had several strokes and she'd had a really hard three years in a row. And, and so she's eased on. So it's all good. It just means that I fell behind on my crafting play down time. And now I'm recouping on my mental health time. So it's all good. Then just take my nonstick scissors and trim these down so they'll be ready to use. And again, I'm not big on perfectly straight. I'm not big on measuring. I like a little bit of sloppy playfulness. Some people are going to be much more conservative and line everything up so that it it's all perfect and that is fantastic if that's what you're called to do. My dog is going in and out, so be warned. <laughs> She's only an eight month old puppy, so you have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> so now it just says to attach all of your pieces and, and see how this turns out. And yes, I'm definitely going to be doing some scrapbooking pages. Part of what I've been doing is collecting stories attached to family photos um, while she was still here. And so now that I have all of those collected and, I, and little notations from her, I will be doing some family history scrapbooking and I've got my daughters all working towards their memories and putting them on paper. Let's see. Not sure why. Hang on, hang on with me here. I'm kind of going, hmm, this isn't lining up the way I thought it would. So I seem to be missing a piece that might have fallen. Again, I run a daycare, so I have tons of small children that come into my craft space during the day. And then they bump my my prepped work and that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. It's supposed to have another piece attached and I could go on ahead and remake it or hunt it down or grab a spare and I'm not going to. <laughs> Again, I have other things to worry about and it kind of gives it a different appearance and I'm okay with that. So let's see. I'm probably the most non-linear crafting person I know considering I am a type A personality. That's really kind of comical. Um, but it's one of the few ways that I can say, hmm, no, Everything doesn't have to have the I's dotted and the T's crossed. And so let's see, here's my hello. Just 
that's writing. To say. Thinking of you. And friend. And I'm actually not going to place this one on mine. I am going to save this and use this card to send to my great aunt, who is my grandma's big sister. And just kind of thinking about her because she lost one of her siblings and there's not many of them left. So I will use that card for something else. I don't have to use that sentiment. Again, I pre-cut everything because if not, this video would be about 10 miles long. So off to card project number three. What does it say? It says to take the mink and ink it with toffee. So I'm going to gently do the cloudy kind of sponging again with my sponge dauber. You could go ahead and just edge it along and using a, a standard round sponge, or you could run it gently and just get a, a smaller edge by dragging it over your ink pad. You could leave it open, although I really do like this antique family vintage feel. And the more you use your sponge dauber, the moister it is, and it gets juicy, so it, it goes faster, as you've no probably noticed. I agree. This is one of my favorite paper packs in ages. It'll be perfect for the heritage part. It'll be perfect for an awful lot. Um, I actually have done some fun things using our... Yesterday and Today Papers, I did a really cute card the other day, and I'll have to sh show a picture of it at some point, but not right now. Okay, then it says, with this French vanilla to use, I use the die cut, and then we're going to use the espresso pigment with the silver embossing powder for the statement of you mean the world to me. Oh, it's tiny. I suppose that's fine if you're not old and halfway blind. There we go. And always remember to um, prep your stamps because they have a coating and they don't really absorb ink evenly if you don't freshen them up. So you can juice them, you can use your cleaner. I'm old school and I tend to just rub it on my arm or my hand. So there's that. And you could go on ahead and use your anti-static pad. I did not choose to this time, partly because it fell. <laughs> I dropped it and I don't feel like going fishing. <laughs> so, you know. Then again, with the ultra fine powder, I use my tray. So... As you can see, it, it stamped quite nicely. And I'll move my mat over a little so I can heat emboss on the glass surface of my, my desk. It'll get loud, but it'll be fast. Yeah, some people use Versamark. I like the fact that 
I really didn't have to pull out that many materials. So using the same juicy ink with the espresso, it, it just one less thing to pull out. If I'm doing a scrapbook page, I'm more likely to go in ahead and pull out all of the stops for quick cards. Mm, not so much. I, I also find that even though I'm using a colored powder, using the espresso ink underneath, it gives it a deeper tone instead of just the silver. You can actually get a shadow of the espresso. So it adds an extra effect that's well worth the effort of using. Can you see that shadowing? Um, let's see there. Uh, I love and hate autofocus. Anyways, you can see the silver and in person it has that espresso undertone. So it has a shadow feel and I like that. Then it doesn't actually say to ink the edges per se. Oh, it says to actually use the espresso to antique and sponge first. Let's see here. Powder, antique heat, emboss, sponge edges first. So it says to emboss it first on the edges. And I'm not going to actually heat emboss this side. New stuff on your skin. Oh, yeah. Again, using the Versamark is really a great technique. I'm old school and lazy. <laughs> you know, I got in the habit of just rubbing it on my skin probably back in the, oh, 80s, 90s era. I don't know. It's been many, many, many years. And... It's probably not a great idea, but it works for me. And it's just one less thing to pull out when I'm working. I'll have to, before I log out tonight, I'll have to show you my tiny little workspace that doubles as my husband's office space and my daycare office space that the daycare children actually run through in and out of all day long because it's attached to my back door and we spend seven to nine hours a day outside, but they have to come in for drinks and bathroom breaks and such. So, okay. Then it says to do this French vanilla clip and it again suggests antiquing it and sponging it and heating it up so it spackles. I'm thinking I'm going to keep this simpler than that because I kind of like that look and it really looks nice with the tag and the sentiment. So I'm going to let that sit and then stamp my globe. And because the globe is also the espresso pigment. I'm going to not use this. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I should probably, I'll go ahead and try it with the sponge of the back of a mat. So I'll reach across and grab another mat. It's, I like the sponge on the back of our mats more than I like the sponges that come with our stamp sets. They're handy, but I like these a little better. I get a better coverage and absorption rate. So oh yeah, that turned out so much nicer. Let's see if I can get this where you can see how nice that turned out. 
using the back of the mat is a much more thorough coverage. So there we go. Then it's just assembly time. So I've got my card base and my card stock. And I'm running out of adhesive here, so I may have to scrounge up another roll or two or three because I use a lot of it. <laughs> And I only used partials today. Let's see here. So there's that. Then there we go. I had to figure out my order here because. I just kind of dumped a pile and had some of it bump off. And typically I create my own things instead of following the kit. But this looked super adorable. And I'm going to be using this for a lot of different projects. So I figured, well, we'll go ahead and make the kit. And then my lovely ladies that will come to my open crop day will have the option of using the ones that I did not use. And then I'd have the stamp set because, yes, it would be nice if I could have gotten the stamp set separately. I don't begrudge it, though. So I will definitely put it to good use. And let's see here. There we go. Then the clip. I could use some 3D foam tape to add a little bit extra dimension and oomph, especially on that clip, because the kind of just blend together a little more than necessary, but that's okay. The Tombow ones sometimes do, but I will tell you. I really love our tape runners. I've used the large, big, um, I can't even remember who makes them. They're usually pink and, or red, and they're just really big. And they're too big for my hand, and they're a pain to, to change out the refills, but they work really okay. And then I've tried the Tombows. And again, they work pretty good. The drawback to them is that what I have found is because of where and how I store my, um, my scrapbooks, that the heat deteriorates the other brands and the other styles. So scrapbooks that I made back, oh, when my, my children are now grown. So when they were little and I made their, their scrapbooks, I made a scrapbook for each of them for their first 18 years, at which point I gifted them their own and I picked my favorites out of those photos for my own scrapbook. And what I found is the other brands and styles, the adhesive wears out. So when we'd open up the books, half of the things that I had adhered fell off of my cardstock. So I'm not as impressed with them. Whereas every time we've had a change in our close to my heart adhesive, I have found that it withstands the test of time and heat and the elements. And I'm actually going to take half a moment and, and show you what I mean about my space. So over this, this whole room is nothing but a sunroom. So you see all these windows. There's no um, 
air conditioning, fans, or anything in here. And all of those scrapbooks over there sit with the wind, the sun shining through and the heat and the cold and the elements cooking or cooling this room. And our close to my heart adhesive has always, always withstood it. I could open up a scrapbook from 1997 is when I finished it and all, everything in it will work. Using other adhesives, they don't. So that's why I am really, really, really loyal to Close to My Heart's products. I'm loyal to our page protectors that don't crack in this room after all these years and our adhesive that doesn't disintegrate and fall off. It it keeps everything, all of my elements right where I put it to begin with. So I can't say that to other companies. I can't say that about other product lines. I can't say that about heat guns. I can't say that about any other product other than close to my heart. So it's completely worth it to me. And then finally, our last card is project number four. And it says to ink up the paper with the edges, with the toffee. So this will be nice and fast and smooth, which is good because, wow, this video has turned into almost an hour. We'll see if I can get it done before the hour is done. Um, and then the next step, it says, is the rectangle and espresso pigment for the scent for the yeah for the sentiment and then toffee for the edges so i'm going to go ahead and use this sponge because the edges is a stamp and then let's see and the edges and toffee Yes, lots and lots of natural light, which has its benefits and it has its drawbacks. So there's my little border. And then best wishes is the sentiment this time. which means we have used literally every stamp in this set in making this these four cards, which is pretty ingenious of main office and their creative staff, I must say. There, that pops quite nicely. And then it says to do the star and do the heat emboss again, which means, of course, more noise. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for hanging with me on this. Who would have thunk, right? Still pretty quick. I think I have adhesive all over my fingers at this point. I do admit to being a messy crafter, so that's fine. Such a tiny little star to be heat embossing. And then I'll hold it down again. And it's going to get noisy. Sorry about that, ladies.
Here we go. Now to just lay this out. I keep setting things down and because I'm not working on my standard work table, I keep having to look around as to where, where did I set down that tape runner? Where did I put the twine and so on? It's kind of entertaining in a silly sort of way for somebody who's fairly organized and has specific things in specific spots all over my house. So you'll see as soon as I finish this card, I'll show you my little tiny space. Okay. I'm not sure if there's a really specific order that this is all supposed to go on. So probably and there's little gaps in between. Let's see here. I have so many little pieces. There we go. So looks like it is French vanilla. There's tiny little gaps in between each of these pieces as well, instead of butting them up the way we typically do. So it adds an extra pop value, which is handy because these are somewhat darker, grayer feeling pieces. So let's see why they would have this broken up a little more. Then we do this. with this one way over here. Our uh, banner is going to go over here or yeah. Then the instructions recommend twine. I'm not going to do it because I'm truly tired of twine after putting it on several pieces. And although I like it, I like it in moderation. If I hadn't made these back to back, I would probably be much more amicable about it than I am, but that's okay. And then I'm going to use my 3D foam tape on this because I have it handy. Had it too close to the edge there. And of course, because I'm going to show you my space, you're going to see just how small it is as well as how messy it is. So I tell people don't let a messy craft space stop you from getting your creative hat going. So, and that is it for project four. I know that some would add extra paper and add the twine. I'm, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you can if it calls to you, but I don't believe in putting things on just because instructions tell me to or decorating exactly and I, I followed the instructions better than I typically do so there is that okay so a quick look so I have these great windows stained glass that was built and then again I showed you most of the space then the other direction this is all of my craft area 
I literally have a three foot wide little shelf. My Cricut and all of my craft paper is right there. I hang my mats from the rack. Then all the paint things like fly swatters are for daycare, daycare curriculum. I do have my ink there, my pass through to my kitchen, cookbooks, office supplies, first aid kit for daycare. And that's pretty much my entire space. So again, I don't have a lot of room and I have been doing this a lot of years and I know people that have tons and tons and tons of supplies and I've gone through a lot of supplies but I buy with intent and it has served me well over the years it's helped keep me motivated I when I get a new book I sit down with post-it notes and start making little jots of of project ideas and what I'd like to use it for, um, pictures that I've got stored up waiting to be used. If I see paper pack that's perfect for that, I'll do a, a mock-up of how I want the layout to go so I know how much paper to order. And that's all that I do. I keep all of my stamps handy and when I am done with them, I say goodbye to them because Quite simply, I don't have to have them all. I have to have access to them when I want them, and that is it. Um, yeah, the sticky notes are, are the way to go. I actually make my own for these types of things if I already have product on hand. Uh, so I'll take some of our scrap paper, and I will use our big, bulky glue pen and wait for it to be the blue to dry. And then it's an instant sticky pad. And so I can actually stamp little samples on my sticky note into my, my, my uh, catalog. And before you go, I wanna show for those that haven't, aren't on my newsletter mailing list, I made a super cute and I have to share it card with instructions using our Operation Smile stamp set and our mix-ins from this current catalog. And I think it's absolutely adorable. I love this confounded thing. I've been showing it to all of my daycare families today and they're all going, I need a set, I need a set. So anyways, had to, had to let everybody know that. Hi, Pandy, I mean, Renee, she's my sister. Anyways. Um, Anyways, that's a wrap for tonight. I look forward to talking to everybody. I am going to end this before it says that this has been an hour because wow. Anyways, have a great night. I will be doing another video um, later this week. Thanks, have a great night.